Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to talk about the mflow functions that come with the add-on nsolve. So if you haven't seen the videos on nsolve already, I'll put a link to the playlist of that, but nsolve is a really nice add-on which adds in a load of additional functionality, and you can see some of those functions here, and they're really cool. They do a lot to add some really great functionality to Blender. But what we haven't done so far is talk through nflow. Now mflow has its own menu system here, you can see that there. So you can get into this by either clicking that, or you can press Alt and 4 and select nflow. And you'll see at the top we get this menu system, and at the moment you can see there's three sections of different tools that we can pick from. There are actually more if you come to this plus icon, and I'm just going to spend a bit of time in this video mostly focusing on Topo Tool version 1 and some of the features that it adds that aren't necessarily available already in the nflow or nsuite parts of the nsolve add-on. Now the way mflow is designed to work is to be a really compact menu system that's almost going to teach you to use the menu system as you go. And I really like this. Basically almost everything works off either control, shift or alt or a combination of those keys which means you don't have to move your hand halfway across the keyboard and between those keys, and you can also add in a few other ones as well, you have such a massive amount of variation because mflow also recognises what your mouse is over at the time that you're doing anything. We'll talk through that but at the moment you can see we don't have a massive menu system on this side because at the moment we're in object mode. We have just four functions we can do, and it tells us what those are in this box on the top right hand corner of the screen. So let's start by drawing some vertices by holding down control and using the left mouse button. And you'll notice as soon as I hold down control, the menu in the top right hand corner changes. And this is really fun. So let's just talk through this first of all. So at the moment, you'll notice with me holding down nothing, we see all of the options that are available to us at this point. And you'll notice that below my mouse, it says that if I just currently left click, so LMB is left mouse button, it just means I'm doing a box select. But as soon as I hold down a button, so we'll talk about draw vertices, you'll notice that this will do two separate things. And this but as soon as I hold down a button, so we'll talk about draw vertices, you'll notice that this will do two separate things. And this could seem confusing, but actually it's really intuitive once you get used to it. So in the top right hand corner, it always shows us the combinations available to us at that given time. So at the moment, if I hold down control, it shows me that the only available option with control held down is control plus left mouse button. Now in the area below the mouse button, it just shows me what additional buttons I need to click at this time to get that function to work. So you'll notice that if you have a look in the bottom right hand corner, this shows what my key presses are. So at the moment I'm holding down control, the menu in the top right shows the full combination of clicks needed, the one in the middle below the mouse just shows us what we have left to click if we want to complete this function. So I'm just going to hold down control and draw a couple of vertices. Now this has automatically put us into edit mode as soon as you've started doing this. You can see in my object outliner we now have an nflow object is the way that it's been titled and you can see with me holding down nothing that we've suddenly got a much greater menu system because we're now in edit mode. For example I probably want to turn this into a quad and I can do that very easily. For example here we've got shift and left mouse button is suggest polygons but you'll notice there's actually quite a lot of shift and left mouse buttons. There's one, two, three options, which seems mad, but actually the way this works and the way that this allows us to use these functions of shift, control, alt in combination with mouse button is depending on where your mouse is, it will do different things. For example, if I hold down shift and put my mouse in the middle of these verts, it will go to suggest polygon. If I have it over the vertex, I can click and drag and it will move my vertex around. So you'll notice again with the shift button held down, it's got on the right hand side at the top of the menu all of the options of shift. So it's taken away all of the other options that would have been available to me because now it's only showing the ones with shift involved. And then as I move my mouse over things, the information just below my mouse tells me what I can do at this point. So here I can suggest a polygon, here I can move the vertex. So let's go here, click, and we're just going to suggest that polygon. I'm going to hold down control, click and click, and then shift there to get another polygon. And this works also with our left mouse button. 
the moment I'm not holding down any buttons, but left mouse button is box select. But if I come to an edge here, it says that I can left mouse button to extrude or I can right mouse button to activate the knife. So if I write, I can come in and do the knife tool there, click space, or if I come on this one and then hold down the left mouse button, I can extrude that edge out. And this is another option that we've got added to our end flow that isn't available anywhere else in Ensolve. And if I come to this edge here, click, you'll notice this has a sort of merging function. So if I hold this close enough to the vert there, it will then stick to it and then say, okay, we're gonna join all these together. Now that's great. If I just come to the middle, I can drag out, come to the middle and drag out, but this seems a bit tedious. So what they've also done, which I think is brilliant, is that if I hold my mouse in the middle, you can see the green line shows what we're gonna extrude out. Okay, it's just gonna be this edge. If I hold my mouse off more to the side, it will do the whole edge. There we go. So it really clearly highlights what we're gonna do at any given time. There would just be an edge, there would just be an edge, and so on. So a single edge at a time. Whereas if I don't go from the middle, I go to slightly off the side, this will do the whole thing. And again, notice that this is snapping or shrink wrapping to the surface. We also get other functions. For example, if I hold down control and come here, we're gonna get a loop cut. And look at how nice this graphic is of where this loop cut's gonna be. So I want to go somewhere like there to even up the spaces. Or here, I want to left mouse button and just sort of move along to drag these to a slightly different place. I should also add that if we're gonna do a quite nice loop cut, so let's come in here to the side, hold down control and loop cut, you'll see that this shrink wraps those vertices to the edge of this object. So it's really quick to get some really nice and well spaced out geometry on this almost retopology project that I'm doing here on this cube. The other thing on this extruding bit that's really clever, if I just come into normal blender and then drag here, I could just extrude this. For example, I could click E and then it would extrude it out. And if I had a shrink wrap function on it would be shrink wrapping these to the surface. But let's just undo that. So if I then E here, normally if I then went the other direction, well, this is gonna cause a problem. It's sort of underneath and maybe I could sort of G this up or something, but it's never gonna be very, very good as a function. If we then, let's just undo that again. If we come back into mflow, what's really cool is that this extruding edges will do more to work out what's going on. I could, as I've shown, use control and then left mouse button to do a loop cut. But I also, if I wanted to, could extrude the edges this way. But as soon as I go the other way, it recognizes that I'm now dragging along this surface. So actually it's gonna turn it into a loop cut. So Ensolve can work out what you're trying to do. It's such a nice set of functions and it becomes so quick and easy to do things as soon as you're used to the process. And to be honest, it doesn't take very long to get used to this process because everything's being shown to you in the menu system or every time you click a button, for example, I could do Alt, it says that, oh, I've got the ability to analyze here. Um, let's just do something like click and then click and then there with the knife tool and then I'm gonna alt and then right click to analyze and you can see that we're now automatically analyzing all of this surface and it's saying, oh look, here's some triangles, you probably don't want that. If I come here and then let's do a knife somewhere like that, it's gonna start saying, oh look, we've got a bigger problem here and that's actually now a quad because it's got four vertices but you probably don't want that and I could come into one of these other functions like connect and use Alt to get rid of that edge and that edge there. So that's just because this has got a different tool set. And notice that Alt and left mouse click is to either dissolve an edge or I can dissolve specifically a vert. I'm just gonna undo those because obviously that's ruining this shape. So that's the basis here of what this is gonna do. I will not talk through every single one of these options here because it's just gonna take too long but these have already been set up. I've not created these myself. They're part of Ensolve. For example, I could come here and do, I don't know, the standard industry ones, which has retopology and multi-cut options. And if I ever decide I don't want some of these, I can notice, again, different menu systems, so you can explore these. But I could come here and say, look, I don't actually want this menu up the top, so I'll get rid of that, and I'm gonna get rid of that multi-cut one as well, and I could bring in another one or not bother. The other thing that's really quite fun is that all of these have a different color. 
Now this is really minor, but it's really cool that like the topology tool version one is everything's in green. Anything I want to do, I can see it in green. All of the highlighting is in green. It makes me know what tool I'm on. Whereas the connect ones, if I do something here is gonna be in blue. For example, if I want to do that join, or if I want to use Alt to get rid of that, it highlights it. The arrays functions all in red. And some of these have similar tools. For example, we can dissolve here, and we could also do that in the Connect system. So you can have these shared, or the functions shared, in several different menus for whatever works for you. Finally, there are a few little functions here that I'll just mention. For example, we've got this Draw Vertex Overlay. Uh, what's gonna be a good one? I'm gonna to come to the Connect tool to demonstrate this. So if we had this off, for example, we're actually in edge mode, and so I want to subdivide this edge. If I hold down control and right mouse click, that has subdivided this edge, but as is always the way with subdivision in edge mode, it's really difficult to see this, and I think this is really a failing in Blender to know where these vertices are. Whereas if I come in here, notice we're still in an edge mode function. I can still select edges, if I come to topo tool as much as I want, but if I want to come here and then right mouse button to subdivide, it makes it easier to see because I've got this vertex visibility on. Likewise, let's come to the other side. I can click here to be able to see it through from any surface. And this is really nice because, well, it's showing it in front, but I know that I'm behind this because I can't see the vertices. Come around here and I can see the vertices. So just a nice way of demonstrating things. And then finally, we've got this ghost-like icon I don't know why it's a ghost, but either way, but this puts all the faces just slightly on top so we can see the faces more easily. If I turn that off and turn that off, you can see that we actually can't see all of the faces because this edge between these two vertices would actually go through this surface, so I can't see it, whereas here it makes it nice and visible. Now normally if you're doing retopology, you'd be doing this by using a shrink wrap and having these faces slightly above the surface, which is not necessarily what you want, so this is a really helpful tool. Now I must say this was quite a whistle-stop tour into what Ensolve does. Let's just come into here and slide that along there and then bring one out here. Anyway, sorry, I'm just fiddling now. But as exciting as this is, I wouldn't actually say this is the main thing that Nflow is all about. What Nflow is about is the fact that you can also create these menus yourself. And these menus don't have to be limited to functions within Nsolve, Nsuite, or Nflow. You can use anything from native Blender all the way to any other add-on that you've purchased and installed on Blender can be put into a menu system. And you can make those menu systems be anything you want. For example, this is a very nice retopology menu. I'll probably add some extra functions myself from some of the other retopology add-ons that I've got. But I also want one for when I'm doing my basic blocking out. So I can create a menu system here that I can use for my blocking out workflow and then have a different one where I come into my sort of more minor detail adding workflow and put in the options that I generally use for that. So that's what we're going to explore on the next video on Nsolve, how to custom create a menu to basically create your own perfect menu system for any stage or workflow that you're working in. So if you aren't subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe and that bell icon so you know when that video is out, and I look forward to seeing you for that next video. Have a great day, guys.